Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers here today and I'm carrying on with my beginner's fly tying series uh, just in a simple, simple woolly bugger um, <coughs> It's very basic but I mean it's the sort of foundation of a lot of streamers that we use nowadays um, Very effective fly I mean I, I sort of prefer the woolly bugger is a river streamer rather than still water. I change my still water streamers tend to be a bit different, but effective nonetheless. So we'll tie one up. So I'm using a size eight TM Co. Five two six three. Just got to crush the barb. Um. <coughs> But you can use use whatever streamer hook you, you like, right? It's not particularly important. Uh, and I'm going to take some O2 OLED wire and just. Oops. Just slide the hook. I mean, how heavily you lead it is up to yourself. I don't. I don't want too much. Um, but I mean, you can coat the shank if you like. And then I'll start my thread. This is just uh, six hot Danvils thread. Uh, Flymaster Plus. Get that lock securely in place. Um, <clears throat> when you tie your lead on, when you tie it on, do make sure and leave space for the to tie in your tail and space at the front to do your tying in of the chenille and the uh, securing your chenille rib and hackle um, so that you don't rush the eye. Now I'm going to take some marabou. Just using black marabou. Uh, I like this. I like to nip the fibres from an extra select plume. I'm not a fan of woolly bugger marabou for woolly buggers. Uh, you get more movement and a sort of a wigglier tail if you tear the fi tear the fibres off of the the the, mar the plume. So just I'll just show you. Um, here's here's a nice. Like plume. So take first I would take away any of the rubbish at the bottom and then just take put the fibres at 90 degrees to the stem, just nip them off. And you can just do it in clumps. You end up with a tail. Yeah. Just add that to this clump, it's it's not too much. <coughs> and that moves much more freely than the woolly bugger stuff with the stem. And amongst the fibres. Tail length, length of the hook, and I'll tie that behind the lead, and that will help sort of even the taper of the body. A wee bit. And just use your thumbnail to spread it. You can just nip that off to tidy it up if you like. Uh, I've got to add a couple of bits of flash. Just two strands at each end. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. This is just H two O twist from the Fly Tires Dungeon. It's just a crystal flash type material. So it's dead long. So we'll just uh, fold it over. Nip it. I'll tie it in on one side, just so on my side, and it's a quarter inch longer than the marabou. And I'll just fold it across and tie it on the other side, much the same. Tidy up. And then I'll just come in. <coughs> Trim away your excess, similar length. You 
can see that just gives a nice wee, wee extra bit of flash there. Um, it's not 100% necessary. You might just want to forgo it. You want to add, you might want to add more. That's entirely up to you. Um, so I'm going to tie in a rib. Um, if you're palmering a hackle, you should always rib it. Right. Um, I see a lot of videos. A lot of guys tie. Well, they just tie the hackle in by the tip, uh, and then wind it forward. And it's quicker and it's easier, but you your fly is much less durable. And it just doesn't last as long because um, the the hackle is not counter wrapped and it's not protected. So I'm just using a medium gold wire. Again, change the colour to suit. You can tie your woolly buggers and olives, blacks, or in, you know any colour really. And um, don't be too conservative with the colours. So you can mix up. Contrasting wire ribs as well was an extra, an extra like a white woolly bugger with a chartreuse wire rib is really nice. Um, works very well. So I've got my woolly bugger chenille, and I'm just bearing the core. You just you just get your thumbnail and just strip it, and then I'll just catch that in. And I'm only tying the core down on the underbody. Which saves saves a bit of thickness, a bit of bulk, bulk. makes and it's nice and secure as well. You know, you're gripping the core, and it kind of be stripped. So now I'm just going to wind this forward, one turn in front of the other. Until I get this nice body. <coughs> I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave myself some room, about, you know, an eighth, three sixteenths, something like that, at the at the front. And catch that and come across my thread, turn on the hook just to help lock it. Two or three turns and hold it. Trim that off close. Then. I like to just tidy up at this point, so I've got a nice, a nice base of thread to tie my hackle onto. <coughs> yeah, I'm using a saddle hackle for the body. Something um, you, know, you can buy strong woolly bugger hackle, uh, or. Uh, you can buy the white and packs here, quite nice. I'm just, just taking all the, the fluff and rubbish away at the bottom. And to help make this really secure, right, trim away oh, an eighth of an inch of the barbs. Just leave, just leave these short, short sections, um, very short, just under a millimetre long. That really helps to grip your thread on the stock when you tie the hackle in. Then, when you wind your hackle, take a good full turn at the head, and then palmer back. Nice open turns until you get to the tail and take your th don't let go of your hackle. Take your th your wire and take a full straight turn at the back to lock that in, and then wind your hackle back up. Now you're always winding away from yourself when you do this and then that means that the hackle and the wire are actually being wound in opposite directions uh, and they, they cross over each other and it gives you a nice secure grip of the hackle so that even if a trout does get its teeth in and snip the stem the, <coughs> the feather won't just 
completely unravel. And then you can just break that away. That's how secure it is. You know, you can snap that and the fibre, the hackle stays well tied in. Wire. Don't cut it. Just put your bobbin holder against the hook to stabilise it. And then just... Quite tough this stuff. Bend and break it. incredible, there we go. And just draw anything going forward back. Take two or three turns, just build your neat head. And then when you're happy, you can come on. You're quite finished too. There we go. Four or five turns hook finish. And that's your woolly bugger. The only thing that's left to do is put a bit of head cement on. Or hard as nails or whatever it is that you like to use. <coughs> you can give it a couple of coats if you like a nice shiny head, but for fishing purposes. One's enough. There you go. So, that's the woolly bugger. Classic, classic streamer pattern. Very, very easy to tie. Um, but it lets you kind of practice a couple of, a couple of different techniques. And uh, you can adapt it. You can add a bead. You can add legs. You can do all sorts of stuff um, to the, the basic original fly to suit, to suit yourself. So I hope that was useful, I hope it was enjoyable for you, thanks very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and uh, share the videos. Thanks a lot guys, bye!